his records, but he still considers his music independent. And sure enough, Bobby Lee is hard to put into any category, but he likes that. He's been described as straight-talking dreamer. That's and he's right. here with us in the studio. Nice to have you. It's nice to be had. <laughs> How did you get the nickname? Was it Boy Veteran? Well, I, this is my 19th year in the music business. I started in the publishing business when I was 15 years old, and I grew up in the industry. So I uh, took a lot of hard knocks and fell down a few times, and so that's where I got the nickname Boy Veteran. Did you move here when you were 15? I moved from Houston, Texas when I was about 15 years old. I've lived in about 10 southern states and 25 cities, and I've been to 18 schools, but I'm a Tennessean by heart. American by birth, American by grace. Tennessee and by heart. <laughs> Did you move here specifically to be a songwriter? My dad moved here to rebuild the business and Providence uh, knew that this was the best place for me to, uh, in the words of President John Quincy Adams, fulfill my destiny. Well, we're going to talk to you the whole show because you're very interesting. So are you. But we're going to take a look at your video first. Okay. Here's Chain Gang, the first release from Bobby CBS LP, all fired up. Chain Gang! What, what got you, what led you to Montana? What, how'd you get here? Uh, I was on my way to Stockholm and my son said no. And then I said, well, I'll go to Toronto. And they said no. And I said, well, I'm going to the north of Bangkok. They said no. And I said, well, where, where should I go? They said, Missoula. I said, well, what is it? I said, I don't want to do an artsy fartsy, ippity dippity, uh, young never will be. And this is, it's the closest thing to Lichtenstein you're going to find until you get booted out the next time. So that's how I got here. Blame it on the kids. Tell me something about uh, Montana. Tell me something about Missoula. It's vast. This is a very, very vast tundra. And as far as the town goes, it's, it's another lovely little college town. Uh, but there are no major record companies here. There are no major music publishers here. As far as I know, I, I, standing right here, I've had more hit records than anybody who's standing right here right now, except for me. You know, from Eddie Arnold to Marty Robbins to Roy Clark to Roy Rogers to Pat Boone, uh, you know, the Oak Ridge Boys, etc. But my colleagues here in this town are, are the cream of the crop. They do everything from wake tables to write songs, and they're all hardworking and very, very studious. They know what they're doing. But I can't say that for everybody who waltzes into the county line. But our little crew here is very determined to make something of their lives. Uh, tell me about some of your hit songs. Okay, we'll see. Uh, uh, I had a number one song by Roy Clark called If I Had to Do It All Over Again, I'd Do It With You. And then a big hit song by Johnny Duncan, Song of the Night. I wrote the three last top tens of Eddie Arnold, who sold over a hundred million records. At one time, Eddie Arnold was out selling all the pop artists of RCA. That's when RCA ruled the world. And then uh, I had a big hit record by Marty Robbins, Marty Robbins, uh, his last hit called Sun Memories, Just Won't Die, and some other stuff overseas, but I can't pronounce their names, you know. Uh, okay, tell me something about women, Bobby Lee. <sighs> There's a lot of them. And they're all great, and they're all good looking, and I'm just grateful that any girl would even let me stand close to her. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, but the girl that I'm in love with, her girlfriend doesn't like me because she's gay. And uh, so that's been kind of a disappointment. And yeah. uh, I tried the wig, uh, and she didn't go for it. Well, the last woman I was inside of was the Statue of Liberty. I haven't been with anybody in so long, I have to go out on the highway and look at a yield sign to see what a V looks like. It's hard to cut one from the herd. Oh, here's one. Okay. Uh, regarding women, listen when she's talking, pay close attention to her many moves. Show consideration for her situation. Here's what you've got to do. You can have, uh, hold her like a baby, treat her like a lady, and you're going to find when she wants some love and she'll come running each and every time. That's how to make love to a woman. Let's see, done. 
Now, tell me about Chain Gang. You talked about that before. That was a cut off the CBS All Fired Up album, CBS Epic Sony. And uh, the thing, after all these years, still has legs. I mean, it's got several hundred thousand hits on the, on the two. Uh, you know, people seem to like it. Mm -hmm. Now, how does the melody go for that? You, you got Chain that? Gang, Chain Gang. And then I have a version for Jane Pauly. Mm -hmm. Jane Gang, yeah, Jane Pauly. <laughs> <laughs> now I've seen you. I've, I've been on the YouTube and I've seen you interviewed and everything. Yeah. So what was that like? I mean, obviously you've done this before, right? But what's it like to be in front of, in a you know a TV studio with the lights on you and everything? It's a hell of a lot warmer than it is out here. <laughs> what's your most recent song that you're working on? There's a crack. There's a crack. There's a crack. There's a crack. There's a crack in the Liberty Bell. Bill O'Reilly's got a rumor to sell. Payton gave up on Alaska to make more money faster. There's a crack in the Liberty Bell. And that pill popper, pill popper, rushing and ball, is making money, money, money by jacking his jaw. And a teacher tried to listen to Glenn Beck's brain is missing. There's a crack in the Liberty Bell. How many, uh, how many guitars would you say you've been through in your lifetime? Uh, seven. Just seven? Yeah. Okay. I only keep one guitar at a time until it's just gone, and then I get another one. Mm -hmm. I like playing old, cheap, primitive guitars that nobody else will play. Because I, when I play, it's like a snare drum. I've been called the best two-string guitar player this side of the Danube. Tell me more about uh, playing guitar like a snare. Uh, Rat-a-tat-tat. I have only one regret. Johnny Cash would never let me in the yard. Loretta Lynn took away my credit card. Dolly Parton said, don't take it so hard. Johnny Cash would never let me in the yard. Elvis said, kid, go on home. Hank Jr. said, for Christ's sake, get off of my phone. Pavarotti wouldn't give me another loan. Johnny Cash would never let me in the yard. And one day, Johnny Jr. were out of town, and the girl said, boy, don't make a sound. Sitting in the kitchen, quite as could be, I felt a big hand get a hold of me. I looked up, and there he stood. Roy Orbison said, this does not look good. Johnny Cash would never let me in the yard.